Okay, hi everyone uh, and welcome back to the channel. I recently did a video on how to uh, hypertune an HEQ5 which I'd bought second hand recently. Um, I've had some brilliant results since hypertuning that mount. Uh, I changed all of the bearings, re-greased it and adjusted all the backlash. Um, and I've taken that mount now from a sort of 0.8 to 0.9 total RMS error down to 0.3 to 0.6. It mainly sits at 0.4, sometimes going to 0.5 depending on the seeing. So those result, results are absolutely amazing. I'm so happy with them. One of the big advantages with it though is everything's so smooth on the mount. So balancing it has, made, has become a complete breeze. So rather than doing what I normally have to do, which is sort of give it a push and see how much it moves and do it the other way because there's a little bit of stiction, now I can just literally let go of it and it will fall one way or the other and I just move the weights and so I know that the balance is absolutely spot on and everything is running really smoothly. It's also quietened that mount down quite a lot. So even though with my EQ6R Pro I get absolutely amazing guiding numbers and this literally guides at 0.4 most of the time. Um, out of the box it was about, it was a bit higher than that, 0.8. Um, but since I did PhD2 uh, guide assistant and other adjustments and I did PEC training with this mount and got a, period, a permanent periodic error correction curve uh, loaded into the motors, the guiding with this has been absolutely amazing. However, it's not as smooth as I want it. So a bit like the HEQ5, maybe not as bad, but uh, on certain axes, if I spin the deck, you can see there it spins but it, it then sort of there's a bit of resistance and it stops and the same with the uh, RA if I undo this it will spin if I've got enough room but then it sticks and holds in the position even though this top here this dovetail plate's quite weighty and it's not balanced it does drop but then it doesn't drop all the way to the bottom it's got that kind of bit of stiction going on so Hopefully we're going to remove all of that. Now whether I can improve on the numbers or not, I'm not sure. I mean if I could get this guiding at 0.2 or 0.3, that would be an amazing achievement and I would be so happy uh, that the uh, improvements could do that. But we'll just have to wait and see what we can do with the numbers. Uh, the first thing though is we're going to try and get this nice and smooth. So. I'm going to get on with it now, we're going to strip it down, we've got all new bearings to put in, uh, we're going to clean it up and uh, yeah, we'll uh, see if we can get this tuned up as well as I tuned up the HEQ5. My name is Glenn and you're watching Astro Bloke. Before we start the service of the EQ6R Pro and the tuning, here is uh, a collection of tools and the bearings that I've uh, replaced it with. So you're going to need a 2mm, a 2.5mm and a 5mm uh, Allen key. Um, something like this, um, long nose uh, pliers, uh, needle pliers uh, for getting the float nuts off. You can use other tools uh, like this um, lens remover. The only problem I had was this was quite a big one. I think you can get smaller ones or ones with longer parts on here, but these just were too wide to fit in the hole, so I wasn't able to use them, although I wanted to. Um, with the main nut at the bottom of the RA, it is very tight. Um, there is two holes in it where a tool like this can be used to undo it, but it was too tight for this to, to actually get enough purchase to do it and I was worried about damaging the actual metal work. So I ended up with one of these strap wrenches. These are really good. Um, I'm gonna put a link in my descriptions uh, to uh, the tools that I bought uh, for this job, so you can easily find them. There'll also be a link to the company that supplied me with the bearings. You'll need an assortment of uh, Phillips and flat blade screwdrivers. Um, a rubber mallet's a good idea. Um, it helped me remove the um, 
worm drives that were in the carriers um, and also it can help if you've got a bearing that's particularly uh, troublesome not coming off or not going in it can help uh, give it a bit of persuasion with that and you're not going to do any damage as regards to the bearings you need six deep groove bearings at size 6008 the letters at the end these are two rs ones um, there you can get two rsh uh, there's lots of different variations basically the letters at the end tell you what type of bearing it is so whether it's sealed on both sides so i think that's what the two and the s stand for um, if it's open at one edge that won't be suitable so if you're not sure uh, the bearing companies are very helpful contact them and they'll let you know uh, with the roller bearings uh, there's two different sizes on the uh, eq6r pro where it's to the same size on the HEQ5 and then you've got the very small bearings these seem to be of the lowest quality in the mounts um, and uh, are definitely worth changing now I had read somewhere that apparently in very cold climates ceramic bearings can have problems I'm not aware of the facts on that um, it's just something I'd read so if you do live in somewhere with a very cold climate just double check that if you are getting ceramic or hybrid ceramic bearings that they are not going to have any problems with them. Um, on the grease side, a lot of people use white lithium grease. Um, I like to use the multi-purpose synthetic grease by Superlube. I find this works extremely well. Um, but uh, again, just check your temperature ranges of where you uh, live in the world and make sure that the grease is not going to have any problems dealing with the temperature ranges that you have. I say it's unlikely most I mean so most bearings bearings are designed to be run at thousands of rpms uh, you know so um, and in amount you're lucky if they move more than 180 degrees in a 24 hour period so or 12 hour period so there's not an awful lot of strain being put on the bearings so if you put good quality bearings in they should last a lifetime um, my main reason for changing the bearings is I did want good quality bearings in there and it's not a great cost and also I have found that when I've removed some of the bearings before in um, Skywatch mounts, the seals have not been particularly good and they've been leaking. So you're getting uh, grease and lubricant in areas that you don't want. So um, by putting good quality bearings in there, they're not going to leak. So there's a list of the, uh, the stuff I've used. And uh, right, we'll now get on with uh, taking apart the EQ6R Pro. So the first thing I'm going to do is remove the saddle. So once all three bolts are removed and they're evenly spaced around, I'll just turn that round so you can see that there's the holes there, the saddle will just lift off. The next thing I can do is actually remove the counterweight bar. So I've just done pull that out from the top end move to the bottom of the mount where the counterweight bar comes out and with an allen key work your way round undoing the three allen uh, grub screws inside here and then this housing holding the top should unscrew by hand and uh, take it off as you uh, unscrew it there will be a tapered bearing just inside which uh, may or may not fall out uh, pretty much uh, guaranteed it will fall out so just be aware of that we will be replacing this bearing so once it's uh, fully undone because it's got quite a long thread on it I just locked the uh, clutch there just to hold it in place catch the bearing as it all comes out and you'll see the housing for that bearing is still inside there and we will need to remove that as well and replace that with a new one um, it's easier done once the actual deck shaft is out with that removed you'll notice there's four bolts there on the bottom if we turn the mount back over we can remove these four bolts and they they are the uh, bolts that hold the deck carrier onto the front of the mount. So take these four bolts out and put them somewhere safe. We now need to remove the covers to where the belts go on the uh, 
worm gears so just remove the covers and that will expose that area when you remove the plate you'll notice the three screws are of different lengths so make a note of which holes they go in there's a small grub screw in the center here which holds the motor away from the gear we will need to undo this at one point but first of all we're going to go to the other side and open the control cover we need to now remove the panel so that we can access the back of the motors to loosen them off there are four uh, small bolts or screws in the each in the corners so undo all of these and the panel will open up be careful as you do have wires there you don't want to damage any but as you can see you have full access to the bolts holding the motors in place so with this open there are three allen key bolts one two three on the corners and that will allow this motor to then slide um, upwards which will loosen the tension on the belt so I'm just going to crack these off so from the other side push it all the way down and you should be able to work this belt off nice and gently obviously we don't want to do any damage to it let me just work that round and that's the belt off I've actually got some spare belts that I bought but uh, that looks like it's in uh, good condition so now that the belt is removed from the uh, worm, worm drive there this whole shaft will come out and what I'll do now is I'll just try and remove this uh, housing for the um, roller bearing it should just slide out almost just got a funny angle at the end there So now we have the deck shaft off of the mount. Uh, to get the worm carrier off, we actually do need to lift out the whole worm gear. On the HQ5, the worm carrier actually lifted over the top. There's quite a bit of grease on here, so it's going to be difficult to grip. But if I can just work my fingers under here, hopefully we can slide this bearing up this shaft and off. Okay, now. There's a lot of these sorts of things which we need to be extremely careful with because we want to make sure we put them back but we've got like a little clear plastic washer here which we need to carefully take off and make sure we don't damage. So what we next need to do is take off the clutch locking mechanism. Keep that screw in there so we don't lose it. And this just unscrews. Sometimes the button comes out with it, sometimes it stays inside, and we can remove that afterwards. But if this is left in place, you won't be able to lift up the gear. So, with that out of the way now, we should be able to just lift the worm gear off. There's a bearing that's uh, stayed at the bottom which we need to we need to tease out we can take this collar off as well if we turn this over there we go it's just dropped out anyway we're well, looking inside there not, not too bad bit of grease and there's also another small see-through washer so i'm going to very very gently tease that up and then i'll re-grease down the bottom there and make sure that that goes down the bottom as well here we have the worm gear uh, wow grease everywhere so um, the other bearing that stayed inside comes out of there so that'll be one that we'll be replacing um, but there shouldn't be grease all around this this is this is not correct uh, this is the this is a mess so we'll give that a good clean up We'll see if we can get this bearing out just got to pull it straight 
as I say, a lot of people don't have bearing pullers, I do. And at this rate, I'm going to be getting the bearing puller out because it doesn't want to... You've got to push it dead straight for it to come out with your fingers. As I say, it just shows that you can get it out with your fingers. Um, but I do have a bearing puller, which makes life easy. So these are called Rolux. Now, I know bearings called Rolex, not Rolux. I don't know. I reckon these are just a cheap, a cheap copy. I mean, they feel okay, but I know that the bearings I'm going to be putting in here to replace are going to be a lot better. So this, this needs a good clean up. And then we'll have a look at the worm carrier. So now to work on the worm carrier. Um, I do have a tool which um, can be quite useful in this uh, instance, which is which is one of these. It's a lens removing tool. The only unfortunate thing for me is they're, they're too wide. With these stops here, they're not allowing me to reach down far enough to get to the float nut, which has got the two slots in it to undo it. So I can't actually use this tool. Um, but a pair of uh, long nose needle pliers works perfectly well. So um, the first thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to take this this cog here off. So we just need a small Allen key to fit that. Okay, oh, that's it. That's sliding off now. Put that somewhere safe. So you've got a little cap here, and it's got two little indentations. So that loosens that. We can take that cap off, and in there, hopefully, you can see the uh, the top of the nut there with two slots. And that's what you need to, something like this to get into, maybe quicker to remove. So I will forward this bit of video because I am literally just undoing this uh, nut, which looks like it's going to take me a little while. I was actually using a screwdriver just to help work it up. Once it gets past the, the main bit, it actually becomes quite loose and you can get your fingers in there and it's actually not too bad to undo. So that's that off. So now... We got to look at how the um, I would think that this shaft pushes where that float nut was that way, and will uh, push out these bearings on the inside of the case. I've just got to have a look at that now and see how that works. And what we're going to go for? We'll place the rubber mallet on top there. And let's pop that one out. That's good. Now that bearing has got to go all the way through. There we go. All the way through. And then this one. It should hopefully come off the spine. And there are the bearings. Oh, they're actually Jessa bearings, so they've actually got a name on them. Uh, most of the bearings don't, so... Okay. So these are 606RS ABEC 9s. Um, actually bought a, lo a load of these previously. As these are the bearings that fit my son's uh, scooter, his stunt scooter, so... Um, and I know they uh, they work really well because he's got them in that and they take an absolute pounding. Um, so they're going to last forever in this. Right, so I'm going to give this everything a good clean up and then we'll look to put this back together. So I've given everything um, a good wipe over. The grease that was on this worm drive actually wasn't that bad. Um, so I'll be uh, 
Again, here's the old bearings, we'll put them over there. And these are the new bearings. You can mostly hear the rain. It's absolutely giving it large out there. And we'll just give this a little bit of grease around the outside just to help it seat in. This bearing actually lives in this little bit of housing here and there's a lip to stop it from being pushed out. So there's no further adjustment away. It can only go in one way and the float pushes against this. Because that one actually just sits on the end of that there. So what we need is this bearing here has got to push all the way into that seating. That felt good. It's back in there very nicely. Okay. I'm going to just try and get this back on. It's back on the long wind back down. So again, if it's going to take me a while, I'll um, forward the video because you don't really need to see me putting a, a nut back in. And I'll just go. So it's a long old thread, but get it down the bottom. Now it was fairly tight, so um, I'm just going to tighten it back up and make sure this has got free movement. Now it felt nice earlier, it feels a bit, I would say that feels a bit tight, maybe it's too tight. A minute ago where there was a not so much tension on this there was a bit more I'm just gonna undo it a little bit have a feel right that feels nice so what you want is a nice feel on this but with no absolutely zero movement so I think you can definitely over tighten that so that's something to be aware of. So make sure one of the Allen keys is on the flat part. And uh, mine was pretty flush on the spline when I took it off. So I made a note of that. So I'll put it back on the same part. That's, it's got a nice movement to it. Spinning. No lateral movement to it whatsoever, so I'm just going to grease up those, grease up that worm gear, and then that's ready to go. Some new bearings. Best to apply just a little thin layer of grease to the bit that it's going into and it helps them slide in better you should be able to just be able to um, put these in with just your fit and there you go that slid in lovely that one sometimes they need a bit more of a push with the palm of your hand if you are going to use anything to tap them in make sure it's something like a rubber mallet so that you're not going to damage them in any way this one's a little bit tighter it could be that it's just not in square you've just got to get them perfectly square this one's a bit tighter, so I'll just put my palm on there and let's push that in nicely.
Okay, so with the bearings back into the uh, worm gear, we're ready now to put everything back together. So the worm carrier needs to sit on top like that. And then with the two bearings inserted, put the worm gear back down. Now, that's gone in very nicely. We have the other washer here uh, that came out with it. I've just uh, got some grease around the outside. I put a bit of grease in the housing on the mount. And I'm going to show you that now. Uh, and we'll put this bearing back in place but before I do that this washer here belongs on top that's good okay and I've just realized I didn't put the cap back on the worm carrier so I just uh, Put that back in there. Doesn't need to be over tight, just nipped up. And that's good, right. So we'll go back to the mount. So what we need to do now is replace the deck shaft. I'm gonna put the roller bearing in afterwards. But we have the top bearing here that goes in the housing I'll just grease that up and that should hopefully if we if we get it nice and square it's really mad bearings because you think you've got it dead square and it doesn't go in and it grips and then another time when you're not quite shit like there and then it goes and then Make sure you hold the carrier because you don't want that slipping down. You can gently slide the mechanism back in. And that just needs to, and it's just going to be a little bit of a wiggle while you square it up with the um, bearing that's in the housing there that feels really nice and then we put the housing for the roller bearing back and again this is another one where if it's square it'll just squeeze in if it's not it won't and the roller bearing goes back over the top and we're just going to turn this to the side so it doesn't all fall out. That's nice. And the, the deck feels really nice. I mean, that, that just feels so much, so much smoother. So we can screw this back on and this just holds everything together so once this has got the tension on it so that there's no lateral movement at all we can then do up the grub screws and you can you can kind of feel how tight that's going to be by how much you tighten this up so this needs to be tight to hold it in place and get everything locked but you don't want it too tight. But you don't want it loose that you've got any movement like that. So you're looking to get rid of any any movement. You don't want any movement at all, but you don't want it so tight that it's going to bind or cause any 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 friction. While here we can place back in the counterweight bar. Just 
and put the button on the end so I don't lose anything and that stops it sliding in and out so once you're happy that that's done up not too tight so you don't need to do it tight that you've got no movement in anything but and it's nice and smooth we can then do up the grub screws and this seems to be a design they like which is you've got a main nut holding things in place and then you've got these grub screws which do not allow that main nut to undo at all so as long as you've got no play in it there's no reason that this will ever move or an undo and I think one of the big problems is a lot of people do everything up way too tight so you don't need to do that and the other thing to put back is the button for the declination lock lever so you need that to kind of be square in the hole And then once you do this up, it will push everything to where it's got to be. So now we need to locate the four bolts to hold the deck carrier back on. So just get them located. Uh, don't do them up fully. Just get them so that the uh, all the slack is, is gone. We can then place the belt back onto the worm drive cog and then reaching through the back we can do up the nuts onto the motor while pushing some tension onto the belt uh, by pushing the motor away. Um, once these are, don't do them up too tightly and then that will allow you to do a bit of fine adjustment with that grub screw there where we can actually get the tension dead right and once we're happy with the tension, which should be about 2 mil movement on the uh, belts, then we can tighten up the motors. The two small grub screws, this one at the bottom and the one on the top that's opposite this, are used for the uh, adjustment on the backlash. So take up the slack in them and have a feel of the uh, axis you're working on, this being the deck. You can see there was a slight wobble there. So we need to move the carrier further into the gear. To do that, we need to undo this grub screw a small amount, say a quarter of a turn maximum, maybe an eighth of a turn. And then the one opposite at the top, we need to do up. That will move the carrier in. We keep doing that until we don't feel any wobble. We could have moved it in too far, however, and we will need to slew the motor with uh, say using the handset or something and if there's any binding we'll need to move the carrier in the opposite direction so it's a slow process but what I want to do is a follow-up video on the finer adjustments of how to get rid of the backlash and to get your mount guiding the best possible so I will be following this video up with that Okay, so now I'm going to look to strip out the RA on uh, this mount. So the same procedure with moving the uh, belt off of the worm drive. And uh, we start at the bottom here with this cover. And in the polyscope, it was just hand tight, so we just unscrew that. As usual, we've got some Allen bolts to which lock everything in place. That feels mega tight. Okay. So they're just locking Allen keys, but they're very they're quite tight. 
so I unlock those and that's going to allow looks like it's going to allow this to slide off so this is held on and you can see where the allen bolts bit into that so that comes off there once you've removed that silver collar you'll see a large black uh, sort of shiny nut that's just round with two holes at the end but it's got four very small access holes around the circumference and inside each of these is a small grub screw that we need to undo which will then allow us to undo the nut to undo the nut um, I think the best tool to use is something like a strap wrench I've got some silicon strap wrenches or you can use like a, a car um, oil filter wrench anything like that so um, yeah you just got to get these undone and then you can undo that nut the wrench will have enough grip it's very difficult because they're very shiny yep that loosened that off so it's a little bit tight now I will assume that when I undo this I'm going to get um, a roller bearing drop down so I'm just waiting for that I can see the roller bearing and it's holding in there fairly well I'm just going to take off the RA clutch to make sure that nothing's going to be holding on to the cylinders or anything there's a lot of uh, grease in that oh I don't like that that's not necessary oh that's very gloopy that's very sticky as well not sure what that's about seems a bit excessive that so you can see the grease there is really really tacky as well okay so I think the roller bearing is going to fall out at the bottom here when I undo look at how loose that deck is now so I always feel that they've done things up too tightly okay Oops. there's the roller bearing okay <laughs> And there's your arm. Okay. I think I will be putting this on my work, mate. So bear with me and I will find something for that to sit on. So with the deck laying on its side, there's um, a small plug here that you pull out. And this is the um, encoder that uh, lets the mount know where the worm drive is on the RA um, and this is used in conjunction with the with PEC I need a shorter screwdriver than that so there's two screws holding this board which has the encoder on or the reader for the encoder and so we just need to undo these screws and take this out because we can't actually remove the axis, the worm gear with this in place because it's in the way. So we just undo these. There we go. And then very gently we should be able to remove the encoder I'm going to keep those screws with it so we know which way around it goes and that can sit there so with the deck on a suitable surface I've got some grease on the uh, main shaft there just to help getting these bearings and everything off so we just remove that uh, gauge and then we undo the four locking bolts for the worm carrier and we need to um, remove these now this uh, worm carrier is slightly different on the RA to the deck where this one is actually on top of the gear so it can lift off separately so I'll just remove those and then we've just got the two grub screws one at the top and one at the bottom 
which are for the uh, carrier adjustment for the backlash so we just loosen them off and that will allow me then to remove the worm carrier next we need to uh, get this Oh, it's a little bit fiddly this one. We'll get, get this bearing off. So it's just about getting it straight and it will come off. And then we can then take the worm gear off. But first of all, there's a small transparent washer here. Oh, actually, there's two. So we just remove both of these and make sure we put these somewhere safe. Just be really careful with these because they are quite important to the spacing of everything. And now we can lift up the brass gear. And this has got a bearing top and bottom. Let's just see if we can just work that over the top there. And once that's removed, and one of the bearings decided to hang on, I'm just going to pull that off. And now with uh, all the parts off, we do exactly the same as we did with the uh, deck shaft. We uh, remove and replace the bearings and clean everything up. And with the uh, worm carrier, we service that in exactly the same way, replacing the two small bearings. And obviously making sure everything is cleaned and greased. And then we've got to reassemble. First up, we're going to replace the brass gear it might take a little bit of fiddling but make sure that's seated down we can put the worm carrier back on top make sure any washers that you removed you replace in the same order we can then put the four bolts back into the worm carrier and slightly do them up just to take out the slack don't tighten them because you still need to be able to make adjustments to the worm carrier so you'll need them not fully done up to be able to do that. So we're at the point now where we're going to be putting the RA back into the mount. I've just got the, there's two bearings that go in this housing. One is the deep groove roller bearing which I have here. I've put a little bit of grease in the housing and I've just got to see if I can get this located and then it will be the tapered bearing that goes in the bottom we'll do that afterwards that hasn't quite gone in that felt felt good and then it gripped so we're just going to take that out, make sure we've got good grease all the way around, try that again. There we go, that went in very nicely. So before I put the RA shaft back in, I'm just going to grease the inside of this bearing RA shaft. Nope, we located nicely. So that's good. What we now need to do is get the housing in for the tapered roller bearing. So I'm just going to apply a little bit of grease to the outside of this. And this needs to go in here. Like that. And then that roller bearing. There we go. Just needed a good squeeze either side. Well, that was always going to happen. So, didn't want to go on, and then as soon as I let go of it, the whole thing just slid straight off. There we go. That is home now. 
of what I would suggest before we go any further is just to locate this nut on the bottom that way the bearing can't fall back out help if I put the nut on the right way round so now we can do up this nut and this will press against that roller bearing or taper bearing get everything in position So now there's four Allen bolts that need to be tightened. And what that does is locks this ring in place so it can't work itself loose. And the next thing that goes on is this collar. Next we can install the periscope. And last but not least, we've got a little cap here that covers everything over. Okay. So the same as with the detonation, we replace the belt onto the RA and make sure we've got about two mil of movement on the belt. Very lightly, uh, we do up the worm carrier, we don't do the nuts up tight at all, There's just literally take the slack out of them so we can still move the carrier up and down. We've got two adjustment holes, one here and one here. And by adjusting them we can move the carrier so that the worm uh, drive goes into the gear. At the moment, you might be able to hear that, and that's movement where the gear isn't fully engaged with the drive so to, to move this this way we have to undo this grub screw and do up this grub screw if you undo one and do up the other and it gets worse you know you've just gone the wrong way so just reverse it but uh, which is quite easy to do but don't make any big movement so I'm literally going to just undo this about an eighth of a turn and I'm going to do this one up the same. That's still wobbling but it's a lot better. So again, undo this one, do up that one. Now there's no movement, no wobble. But we could have done it too far so there's binding so what we need to do now is connect the mount to power and the handset and we need to slew the RA and the deck and make sure that there's no binding if we have any binding then we're going to need to loosen off the worm uh, gears and then when we get them in the right place there should be no binding and no wobble okay I'm just going to get this powered up So once you've got the mount powered on, I use the handset for this procedure because it's just a lot easier, but you can control it with whichever you need. Um, one thing to bear in mind is that when you've made adjustments to the worm carrier, you will be moving this up and down, so it could actually change the um, adjustment you've done to the belt. So make sure you double check that. So I'm going to start with the deck.
and I'm basically just having a feel there good I'm basically going for a full revolution and I'm listening for any binding or noises and no binding So really the deck is ready for me to test out on some stars. Right, okay next is the RA, let's just lock that in place, I might move that around actually. I've got that, I need to change the angle of that, that lever. Okay, so I've adjusted it so there's no wobble, I'm just going to make sure that the <coughs> Clutches have got no play in them. And now we're going to check the RA. Well that's great, there's absolutely no binding and no play. Now they could need a lot more fine adjustment than that because um, we do need to get this guide in to see whether or not everything is adjusted well. But at the moment that's looking good so I'm going to put the saddle back on and then we'll have a feel of the mount and uh, get it balanced. So I'd just like to wrap this video up with um, balancing the mount and um, since the service I've done it's so smooth there's no problems with balancing whatsoever and if you've got uh, even a little bit too much weight one side it will just pull that side really easily so before there would be a bit of stickiness and I would have to push it and see how long it would take before it stopped with this one as you can see it's just falling scope side so we can just pull this out a little bit and you've just got real fine adjustments for the balance and it just it's really nice really smooth and the same with the deck again it's just really light and smooth there's no there's no pushing with it where before I'd have to sort of almost give it a bit of a shove and see how long it would go before it would stop and now it's just really really light and if I've got any weight too much at one end it will just fall that side so it's so much easier to balance uh, and uh, I'm really looking forward to getting my first guiding numbers with this so as soon as the skies are clear I'm going to get this connected up to um, Nina through EQ mod and PhD2 I'm going to do a separate video going through the process of resetting this up because I'm going to do it like it's a new mount uh, because basically it is so I'm going to show all the connection processes and then I'm going to go through the tuning and getting everything running well and hopefully show some improvement in the guiding figures um, we'll see about that as I say um, I actually was guiding at point 0.4 most of the time um, and the worst numbers I would get would be point 0.6 or point 0.7 on a particularly poor night so if I can improve on that I'll be very pleased on point 0.4 but we'll have to wait and see but we'll be doing all of that and also I'll be doing how to do a new pet curve and I'll add all those details in so that you can see the improvements hopefully that I've made but at least you can see how to connect them out and get everything set up for good guiding. So I hope the video has been helpful to you. Um, I will put uh, some details in the comments section and if you have any questions please feel free to reach out to me in the comments section. I'll be more than happy to chat with you. Okay, till next time, clear skies.